Hey, hey, and welcome to another episode of the Rabbit Dog's House. In the house, we like to focus on horror gems that audiences may have forgotten all about. We think these films are worth a second look, or at least worth a first time viewing. On this episode, we are leaping back to the swinging 60s to take a look at Wait Until Dark. A slick thriller that became incredibly influential to many genre directors. Wait Until Dark is about a blind woman forced to defend herself against a trio of criminals slowly narrowing in. Released in 1967, Wait Until Dark is based on a play by Frederick Knott. The film is directed by Terrence Young and stars Audrey Hepburn and Alan Arkin. When most film audiences think of Audrey Hepburn, the horror genre is not immediately what comes to mind. Still, Hepburn's most popular image in the vernacular of popular culture is that of romantic lead. And some of these romantic elements do follow her into Wait Until Dark, but overall her performance is that of a vulnerable woman with untapped strengths and resources. Arguably, these preconceived images of Hepburn make her performance as Susie all the more inviting, especially as we view her struggle with blindness. The film opens as a blonde, attractive woman is sitting waiting for some drugs to be sewn into a doll. She takes this doll to the airport, flies to New York, and once there she sees a very ominous looking sunglassed man that we will come later to know as Rote, and she proceeds to pass the doll along to a man named Sam who was another passenger on the flight. The film jumps ahead and we see three men gathering at an apartment. Carlino and Mike are partners in crime, and the third man is the sunglass man from the airport named Rote. Rote talks about Lisa's betrayal and the loss of the doll. He reveals that they are in the home of Susie and Sam, Sam being the man from the airport that Lisa gave the doll to, and the scene is being set. A creepy sequence plays out as Susie comes home and walks right by the men and a horrifying scene in her closet. Being blind, she does not notice these sights, but her other senses are raised and she knows that something is off. After these semi-tedious setups, the film finally begins. Oat has blackmailed Carlino and Mike into an elaborate scheme to take advantage of Susie and get back the doll. Or, more specifically, the drugs in the doll. Sam has been called off to assignment and Mike pretends to be an old friend of Sam's to get close to Susie. Wait Until Dark utilizes a very simple setting to tell its chilling tale. Originally this was a play, so one can understand the need for minimal sets. The film opens up a few scenes, but the action primarily does take place in the apartment. And I think this works perfectly. I did a lot of theater, and I always like to see how something could work on the stage just as well as the film. With some good characters and the right setup, I have always been a fan of films that can create a scary atmosphere with very little. It really does become about the characters as these three guys play this cat and mouse game with Susie. Each of the three actors take on their own specific persona that helps to distinguish between the actors. Carlino is played with a thuggish personality by Jack Weston. Richard Crenna is Mike, who is the type of guy that walks that line between different experiences. He may have been an okay guy, but instead life took him on this trail of crime. And Alan Arkin is brilliant as Rote. His versatility is on full display as his role requires him to take on different personalities in order to fool Susie. Arkin soon dissolves all of his characters down to one simple evil man. Of course, modern audiences might find laughable the 1960s jiving dialogue, but Daddy-O, Arkin's take on Rote is a truly evil sinister man, and he makes a totally great villain, or horrible, however you want to look at it. Played by Efren Zimbalist is Susie's husband Sam. Sam is kind of a pukey guy. She is doing everything she can to appear a complete woman to him, and he has done nothing that I can tell that makes him deserve her other than accept her blindness. You come to feel for Susie as she is determined and she wants to be as efficient as possible. Maybe it's just the male persona in cinema at this time, although these kind of guys still actually exist. Sam is often condescending, and almost plays the martyr on occasion. Still, he is not in the film a whole lot, so that helps. And Susie is a terrific character, especially considering the far more acceptable masculine heroes of the time. Through Hepburn, Susie's physicality is incredibly feminine. However, what the film becomes about is her growth as a character. 
and her reliance upon herself and not Sam, which was her goal from the beginning. And what's great about the film is that the only help Susie really gets is from her upstairs neighbor, who is this adolescent girl named Gloria. Julie Herod is the pre-teenage Gloria. Gloria is a frustrated kid, the, the product of a broken home. One of the most interesting, if not entertaining, parts of the film is watching Susie and Gloria work together. This unlikely duo uses the situation to the best of their advantages. Susie may be blind and Gloria just a kid, but they have the advantage with the apartment and communicating with each other. Unlike the men that lack any sort of foundation or communication. The women know to use their strengths and not just assume that their physicality is what's going to get them through. And this is definitely something that I love about Wait Until Dark. The film basically becomes about this blind woman and young teenage girl versus these three grown criminal men. However, one by one, each of the characters disappear from the film until we are left with Susie in one nail-bitingly horrifying suspenseful finale. It's a battle of the wills between Susie and the men. And the film has one particular moment that has been referenced many times by many well-known genre directors. Both John Carpenter and Wes Craven have both said in several interviews that, the, that there's one particular moment, and I'm not going to give any spoilers away, but there's one particular moment that they have tried to duplicate or have has definitely influenced their work whenever trying to recreate a scary moment in their own films. Especially if they want that one good scare. And again, no spoilers here, but I will say that the syrupy conclusion is kind of lame. Even I'll admit that it makes me cringe a little bit to watch. It doesn't change anything else that has happened throughout the film in terms of how great it is with the scares, the tension. But there's just this moment that's kind of demeaning to all that Susie has done. And again, it makes Sam kind of a pukey guy. It's just really sugary and maybe audiences at the time needed that sort of conclusion, especially with like referencing an Audrey Hepburn film. But until then, the film definitely catches you in its grip. Wait Until Dark is full of smart moments that illustrate just how clever Susie really is. The men have all the regular advantages, but Susie is incredibly insightful and resourceful. Director Terrence Young really does capture the best features of his actors, the lighting, his choice of music, and he frames them in a way that all their anxieties really come forth. The viewer is totally drawn in that even if it's a moment where we know a character's lying, we still do for a second kind of think, wait, are they telling the truth? And it's moments like that that then set you up for a moment that you weren't expecting. The music by Henry Mancini sets a chilling tone and foreshadows the horror soundtracks to come in the late 70s and early 80s. One of the most iconic soundtracks in horror is John Carpenter's Halloween. The main theme is definitely his own. But one can certainly find the similarities with Laurie's theme and the main theme of Wait Until Dark. The director also does not shy away from utilizing specific effects that puts the audience in the place of what it would be like to be a blind person. The original theatrical run definitely utilized this effect in tuning down the lights as low as legally possible in order to really pack a, su a super punch into the suspenseful moments of the film. And I think it would have been really cool to have been able to experience this at the time. And anytime I show Wait Until Dark until one of my friends, I always try to recreate that as best as I can. Now, if you are looking for a gory film or fast-paced terror, then Wait Until Dark is probably not for you. However, if you love the growing anticipation from films with a sort of cat and mouse setup, or a scary feature that grows in terror throughout the duration, then Wait Until Dark is definitely something you should not miss. This film gives me chills every time, particularly the combination of the effects and the music that all come together in the end. You also don't want to miss it if you enjoy strong female heroines, heroines that seem vulnerable, but then really come through and manage to repeatedly outsmart their tormentors. The performances are terrific even if you don't care for the characters. The guys are all terrible in the film, but they do a really good job in distinguishing who they are as a character and with their own varying degrees of villainous intent. Gloria really captures a frustrated teen, and Hepburn was rightfully nominated for an Oscar. She does not play Susie as insufferably as she can. She gives Susie normal fears and concerns, 
but she illustrates also how perfectly capable a blind person can be, which is what is terrific about Wait Until Dark. This feature shows that just because somebody has a handicap, it does not mean that they should be underestimated. Susie plays the guys every bit as much as they try to play her. And arguably, Wait Until Dark is way ahead of its time in terms of showing strong female characters that are working together and have a handicap, and that no man comes in to save the day. He may, he may try and take credit for it, but he doesn't do it. But it ultimately becomes up to Susie to save herself. Well, thanks for watching another episode of The Rabbit Dog's House. Wait Until Dark is a high caliber thriller with some snarling bite at the end. If you haven't seen it, it really is worth a look, especially in terms of its contributions for some of our most beloved genre directors of the modern age. Especially in terms of the use of simplistic settings and simple chilling music to really affect the audience participation. Please comment if you enjoyed this movie or other classics like it. What are some of your favorite movies from the late 50s and early 60s that we may have forgotten about? And did you fall for the jump scare moment and wait until dark that everybody always does? I am your host, Justin Steele. You can find me over at Wicked Horror or at 411 Pop Culture or on Twitter at Justin Steele at Wicked Horror. That's WKD Horror. I love talking about all things pop culture and especially all the elements of the horror genre. There's so much that I love. I can't wait to hear from you. Thanks for watching and until the next episode, have a good one.